Hi everyone and welcome to SWPL My Story Short and today we are joined by Partick Thistle goalkeeper Megan Cunningham. How are you Megan? I'm good thanks, thanks for having me on. No not at all, thanks for joining us. So brilliant start to the season for Partick, you are flying at the moment, sitting fourth in the league. Uh, you would have had ambitions finishing in the top six last season but you would have wanted to continue that uh, rich vein of form that you were in into this season, you've certainly done that. Yeah, I think last year was um, like a really good learning curve for us. I know, obviously, when we made top six last year, with the split happening, um, it was always within our targets to try and aspire to compete with the top six. And although in the second half of the season, I think we maybe picked up two points out of a possible, or well, we played each other twice, so we can work at the mass. It wasn't very a good turnover, but I think playing against these teams, you showed the difference of the first round against the second round we came back around. Um, and the maturity and the kind of belief that we had in terms of there is really nothing to fear. Um, there's a little bit less pressure when you make that top six when you're playing against those top teams. Um, just with it, we talked about it just before we came on, Cordia was with kind of the budgets and the differences and how we're trying to almost compete with unrealistic uh, standpoints, but there's certainly things you can do um, and it's kind of utilising what you've got. And we've got a lot of fight and a lot of spirit within the squad. And I think a lot of girls that have played at clubs, um, at these top clubs at some stages in their career, whether that's them just coming to the end of their career or maybe at youth level. So they've got a little bit of taste of what it's like to be at that elite level. And uh, for whatever reason, you know, it's hard enough making a living in the game as a female anyway. Um, you know, a lot of them have full-time jobs and we're just trying to find that balance. But I think last season, having that little bit of top six experience of competing with the team's we went into this season with kind of like not really fearing anyone. Um, and that's not as not being naive. It's just, you know, Brian says it all the time. He's a bit like Ted, Ted Lasso. He's always talking about big belief. And his he's, team talks before games are always big, that big word of belief. And I think we definitely have that in abundance uh, this year. Um, and don't get me wrong. I think every game we go into, we do not take for granted because we've seen it. You know, teams can take points off at anyone. Montrose got a great result at the weekend. Um you know, against Hearts, who absolutely battered us, if I'm being perfectly honest with you. Um, so we know that, you know, at any stage, that like, you, you can't afford to have a bad game in this league. Or if you do, it has to be the case of you roll up your sleeves and you, and you fight. Um, and I think that's what that team's got in abundance. So I think we have started well, but we know there's another round of games coming and, like, we can't take a foot off the gas. We want to make top six again, so... Yeah, I think um, when, obviously, me from the outside and I, I, I watch on and I'll see even the, the clips on your socials and things like that, it does seem like there's a, there's a real team spirit there at Partick and it, it's, it's transferring onto the pitch and onto your your performances as well. Yeah, I think that's something we are quite... Definitely, I've, I mean, I've been involved at many different clubs throughout my career. Unfortunately, I'm a bit older now, so I'm definitely been, been around. Um, <laughs> so... I think Thistle's definitely got such a good family feel about it. You know, even when we do any events and stuff like that, they try and encourage as much our families to get along. Um, there's girls there that are like in their thirties, and their mum and dad still come and watch them play football, which I think is brilliant. You know, and um, we try and promote that kind of the quality. Of, we've got a lot of guys now coming over from like the men's side that now come and watch the women. Um, obviously, the guys playing a Saturday. The girls will go and watch, you know, any kind of playoff games last year. The girls tried to go up and support the men's because obviously Brian, our manager, plays for the men's side. So there is a lot of like crossover in terms of like we are one club. Um, and I think, and that's no disrespect because this is a bit of a small community. So I think you can do that um, when you have got that smaller kind of fan group there that are willing to, there's no doubt about it, Thistle fans are hardcore and, and they love the club. So it's nice having that transfer across between. Um, and I think that kind of correlates onto the pitch. You see that, like, girls are willing to put their bodies in the line for each other, um, which is brilliant. You know, it makes my job dead easy. Like, half the time, my defenders block everything, so I don't have to do very much half the time. <laughs> um, which, again, you know, at, at different clubs you might not have seen that before in every single player, but I can see that. And we've had girls come in this year and who have played at different clubs or different levels. Um, the girl, Megan, who's played, ended up coming from two leagues below and she's done brilliant to come in and play at the SWPL, you know, kind of that standard. Um, and I think the difference she'll probably see herself is, is the physicality uh, as you jump up the levels. Um, and she's very technically good with the ball but that physicality of the first couple of games I think was was quite hard for her to come in to, to realise that but 
you know, fair play to her. She's fair gets her body about and, you know, and she's you can see she's really trying to get that fight about it. And that's just that's just what happens when you come with us. So like that's just a absolute standard when you come in here that you need to be willing to roll your sleeves up and, and fight for each other and see if you've got that as one of your kind of main aspects. Like that's just your standard across the board. And the rest of the things come, you know, the technical ability, the tactical stuff, that'll all come. But, you know, we we never know when we're beat. We, and I very rarely have said it, but I've seen those girls through the towel and, you know, they, they fight for every ball, every tackle. I've never seen anybody lose a 50 50 in that squad. And that's probably why teams hate playing us as well. We, we are, we're known for um, being a bit of a fighter club as well. And probably amount of yellow cards and sending off the fight as well, we'll probably show that as well. And it's just that tenacious attitude they've got. And they kind of just, they're not scared of anything, which, which I love. I love being part of that. And that's why, you know, Obviously, I'm still signing with Rangers at the time, but I'm out on loan, and that's out alone loan because that's where I want to be. I, I want to be at that club playing every week because it's such a good environment to be in, and the girls really do drive uh, that kind of you want to do better for each other every week, which I think you know that's must be a luxury to coach as well because the girls literally do they know we need a squad as well. Um, and I think just having that kind of like small find that actually just wanting to be able to fight for each other is just it's a joy to play with. So. I think you're doing not giving yourself enough credit there and doing a bit of a disservice uh, mm-hmm. about you not having to do very much. Uh, a fantastic result at the weekend there uh, when you beat Hibs 2 0 away from home. Uh, kind of sets a marker for, for yourselves as to you want to be an established top six team and you found yourself in the team of the week as well. So that doesn't just happen by uh, the defence doing all the work. So you, you did pull off some, some cracking saves. I don't know what it is about Meadow Bank, but we always seem to do all right up there. Um, I, yeah, do you know, listen, again, like I said, I think that was a overall team put in a really good shift at the weekend. Um, we didn't have many chances, but we took them. And we maybe were under pressure at times, but, I, you know, after about 40 minutes in that game, like, I don't say this very often, by the way, but in my head, I said to myself, I was like, they're not scoring today. Like, I just, and maybe you just have games like that where you just feel like, you know, everything's going to go your way. And there was a lot of, had a lot of luck at the weekend as well, don't put it anything past it. But, um, yeah, again, that's my job is to stop the ball going back in it. So I'm delighted that we kept the clean sheet because I'm always on it to get always at that <laughs> as much as we can get a clean sheet because that's kind of like a defensive kind of merit. You know, strikers will always get the credit for scoring goals and that's why they're most expensive players in the park. But the defence is like, for me, is obviously where I've kind of spent most of my career and that's where I would, that's where we kind of, show our kind of success rate is how well we can stop that goal difference um, and we've done pretty well this year um, even against the top top sides you know we've, we've managed to hold our own and took a 1-0 defeat off Rangers who that's no easy feat you know um, you've got the likes of City okay 3-0 it was a penalty a miss hit cross and a cut back you know these are the things I'm looking at I'm like it's not as if we're getting cut open every week Hearts on the other hand was not great, but we were up, up against teams like Hibs who beat Hearts, you know, and then we go and take a 2-0 win. It just shows, again, how far and how quickly the, the league can turn over. And we don't, like I say, we don't take anything for granted, but that's a great result for us at the weekend, just in terms of where we are in the standings. And like you say, like, that's big for us this year, because if you look at how we performed last year when we made top six, it was every team under that top six bracket we either drew or won. And we only drew with Hibs last year to get us that that point was what took us over that threshold so there's two points we've picked up on last year that might not have happened um, you know without that wee bit of experience that we've had of playing and we don't we like I say we're, we're going in with this season with kind of that no fear um, and kind of trusting that we are good enough to play against these teams and we can take points off these teams um, and it, sometimes it does take a wee bit of luck um, and also a little bit of hard work that we've got in abundance to try and you know get up there and and take our chances when they come. I think we had three shots on target and took two of them. So that's not bad kind of uh, <laughs> ratio for the take. And, that, and, you know, Brian talks about that a lot as well. He said, you know, he's obviously a striker. So he understands sometimes there's going to be games where chances come few and far. And I always go back to the game where Celtic beat Barca in the Champions League. And I think Barca had something like 83% possession. Celtic had about two chances and they won the game 2-1. Tony Watt scores and it, you know what I mean? It, it can be done. And I think we go in every game now thinking that can be us. <laughs> you know, no matter who we're playing, like as long as you are, you know, you're disciplined at the back, you work hard and when chances do come, 
you, you at least make the goalkeeper work. That's what we always say. At least hit the target. Then eventually that luck finds in that wee bit of success. So, yeah, it's a massive result for us. But like we say, games are coming thick and fast. And the next round of games are just around the corner as well. We've still get two more games before we, that first round's complete. Um, and I think we've still got points we want to get on the board before uh, the turnaround that. And like you say, the last time I played Celtic, it was 2-1. And it was a very, very tight game. Um, whether that's going to be the case again on Sunday, I'd like to hope so, you know, because I would like to see that we're going to be still win with a chance. But they are proven to be quite a powerhouse this year um, in terms of the goals they've scored. So I'd quite like another good performance for myself if, if uh, possible. Um, but again, we just need to be at our best and that's all we can do. As long as we give it our best, I think we could match or go up against any team and have a chance. Yeah, he's certainly the way he's playing, got absolutely nothing to fear. You've just touched on it there. You, this this coming Sunday, you, you're you playing Celtic games live on the BBC as well, which again is just showcasing the Scottish women's game, bringing it to more viewers, making it more visible. Um, so there's never a better uh, time or place to go and uh, get that shot win. Yeah, absolutely. Um, great, again, there's more opportunities for people to actually view the games, which I think has been great. You know, like the highlight show as well, it, People might not want to come along and watch a full 90-minute game. I sometimes struggle doing that with a guys game, never mind a female game. So I think having that access there is just, it's great for us in terms of like promotion of the league and uh, it's credit to the girls and, and the league in general for, you know, pushing for more investment and more coverage of the games. Um, sometimes the games, they try and spread that across so it's every team's kind of getting a little bit of a fair view, but at the same time, you're going to want to watch the games that are the most competitive. So, we hope we can put on a good performance at the weekend and make it as competitive and enjoyable to watch as possible. At the end of the day, we are we try to promote our product as well. You know, the women's game is growing fast, so we want to encourage as much as the most entertaining we can kind of provide as well, as well as at the end of the day, hopefully get a, a good result for ourselves as well. Um, fingers crossed. <laughs> oh, that's great, Megan. Thanks, uh, thanks for taking the time out to speak to us today. No problem at all. Thanks for having me. And thanks everyone for joining us on SWPL My Story Short.